Again, welcome to IT project course. This is ITCO299 course. This is our unit one, lecture part two. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about project charter document. What is a project charter document and what it consists of? How do we develop it? So in our previous lectures, we discussed about the feasibility analysis. Now, before we embark on any project, we want to know the costs and the benefits. And the tools that we are going to use, is it a variable? Or would the organization like, or the organization vision and the project will be aligned together? These are some few things we have to consider. So here we say before a project can be approved, decline or delay, it will be based on the value added versus the risk of the project. What value the project will add to the organization and what risk involved. So this will be the cost and also a benefit analysis. Now, first thing we should know is what is a project portfolio management. Now, the goals of a project portfolio management is to maximize the cost benefit ratio. Also, we need to maintain an optimal mix of project based on the risk, the size of the project, the cost, and also the length of time to complete it. Also, we should know the purpose, the scope, and the business values. And also, we need to consider the limited resources required for trade offs. So selected projects normally will enter the project management process. And the first document we are going to develop will be, again, the project charter document. So here we say that the project charter is the official written acknowledgement and also recognition that a project exists. So a project charter is the planning team's concise statement of core goals, the values, and also the intent in order to provide ultimate policy direction for everything that comes next. Now, a well-written project charter is a very powerful daily tool for judging the effectiveness of the development effort. Uh, so here we said also the project charter document the business needs or demand that the project was initiated to address. So again, the charter documents all the business need and also the demands that the project was initiated to address. It may also include a description of the product, the service or results of the project. So it's, it, is, it, it is usually the first official document of the project once acceptance of the project has been granted. So again, if the project has been selected, the first official document again is our project charter document. And this is again, our main objective of this course. And the project charter document may consist of different uh, sections. And according to the Project Management Book of uh, Knowledge Guide to create a useful and also a well document, documented project charter, we should include the elements such as uh, the purpose or the justification for the project. Also, we should include the project objectives that can be measurable. Also, the high level list of requirements high level description of the project and also high level list of risk and also the milestone schedule and this is where we can even create our work breakdown structure document uh, budget summary criteria for project approval also the name of the project manager and the authority levels the name of the sponsor or co-sponsors, etc. So this is our main goal of this course. Our course here again is how to develop again a project charter document. And we, as we said, we have different sections, and we, we shall go through each one. So a good project charter again becomes a daily reference point 
for settling disputes. Also avoiding scope creep. So in project management, when we use the term scope creep, it means uh, we have a project and we want to finish this project in six months. It has 10 different features. Now as time goes on, we keep adding more features. So 10 features become 11, then become 12. Now, instead of finishing the project six months, we extend it to one year, two years. So a scope creep, we avoid that by setting the boundary for the project. So it's very important and project charter make sure uh, we avoid it. And in the future lectures, we're going to discuss about uh, scope creep more detail. Also judging the potential utility of new ideas as they arise, uh, measuring progress, also and keeping the development team focused on the end result. So at minimum, a project charter should define the content scope, the budget, the schedule, and also the technical aspect of the project. Uh, example here, if it's a website. Now the best project charters are very short and to the point often outlines or bulleted lists of major design or technical features plan. So a finished project charter should contain the goals statement, again, from the planning phase, as well as the structural details of it. So these are some of the goals and strategies. First, what is the mission of your organization? Also, how will creating this website support your mission? Here we are using a website as our IT project that we are going to develop. Now, what are the two or three most important goals for the website? Who is the primary audience for the website? What do you want the audience to think or do after having visited your website? Now, what web related strategy will you use to achieve these goals? And how will you measure the success of your site? And also how will you adequately maintain the finished site? So these are some of the goals and most important the strategies. Here we are using the website as a, our IT project. Now we mentioned that scope creep is something that we always must avoid. So a project charter define the scope of your project. And I'll use the tender boundary of your project. This project, we have a budget of let's say $50,000 and it shouldn't take more than six months. And it has six different features to, or we can say it performs some number of different tasks. Uh, we have the number of tasks. Now, as we said earlier, the idea of a scope creep is that if we keep adding more features, and also it may affect our budget, budget may increase, and maybe it may affect the time to complete. The time will be longer. So scope creep is the most prevalent cause of project failures. And then here we say also in a badly planned project, scope creep is the gradual but inexorable process by which previously unplanned features are added. The content and features also are padded to, again, modify each stakeholder group. So major changes in the content or site structure during the site constructions are made, and also more content or interactive functionalities than you originally agree to create a stuffing. So in ideas that they are, the whole idea here is the scope creep most likely we had more features. And when we had more features to a system as previously planned, uh, budget will go high. The time of completion will be delayed. So this is something we want to avoid. Now, what are project attributes? A project has again, a unique purpose. Also a project is temporary. We must finish it. A project is not a business operation whereby 
a business manufacturer or produce a set uh, products or provide a service. And this service will be going on always as far as the business exists. Project is not a business operation. So it must have a, a starting date and then the ending date and time. So it's temporary. Also a project is developed using progressive elaboration. Also it requires resources often from various areas. Again, depends on the size of the project and also uh, the features and the technology involved. Should have a primary customer or a sponsor. So a project sponsor usually provide the direction and also the funding for the project. Also, it involves uncertainty, very important. So we have project and also program managers. So a project managers work with project sponsors and the project team and other people involved in the project to meet the project goals. Now a program normally is a group of related projects managed in a coordinated way to obtain benefits and also control not available from managing them individually. So we have program managers oversees the programs, often as the bosses for the project managers. So again, a project manager will be a, a manager or manages a specific project, but the program manager may manage two or more projects together in an organization or can be an enterprise, et cetera. So this is our diagram, which shows the three primary, I would say the three primary elements, or we would say the constraints of any project. The scope goal, you must have a boundary, and also the cost and the time. Now we know if the scope increases or the scope become, and we have a scope creep, it affects the cost, cost may go high, it affects the time, it may take longer to complete. So these are the three major elements that we always manage during the project uh, embankment. So successful project management means meeting all these three goals, the scope of the project, the time, and also the cost. And by meeting all three goals also must satisfy the project sponsor. Now we have the project stakeholders and normally the project stakeholders are the people involved in or affected by the project activities. So stakeholders include the project sponsor, the project manager, and the project team, support staff, customers, users, suppliers, and also the opponents to the projects. Now we have the nine project management knowledge areas and we will go through each one. So a knowledge area normally describe the key competencies that the project managers must develop. One thing also we should know is again, a project manager is more or less a leader. So leadership skills, communication, we shall go through all the knowledge areas. So the four core knowledge areas lead to a specific objective the scope of the project, the time, the cost, and of course we need a quality product. So we need to consider quality. So this will be the four core knowledge areas that will lead to a specific project objective. The scope, again, time, cost, and quality. Also the four facilitating knowledge areas are the means through which the project objectives are achieved. First, the human resources, communication, risk, and also procurement management. Then one knowledge area will be the project integration management, which affects and also is affected by all of other knowledge areas. And this again, total of nine manage project management knowledge areas. And here we say that all the nine knowledge areas are very important. 
the scope, time, cost, and quality, human resources, communication, risk, and procurement, procurement management, and also the project integration management. So project management tools and techniques. Here we say the project management tools and techniques will assist the project managers and also their teams in various aspects of the project management. And these are some of the specific ones include. The first two we, may, we are dealing here is the project charter document. We also should have a scope statement so that we stay within the boundary of the project, avoid the scope creep. We also have what we call the work breakdown structure, WBS. A work breakdown structure here, we say it's a scope because normally it consists of all the activities that must be performed in the project. We know some activities must be performed first before the next one. There are some activities that can be performed concurrently. So we have to schedule all this. So that's what, that's what the work breakdown structure stand for so that we can meet the time. Now with the work breakdown structure, we can use a common software that is used a lot or the two that you use a lot is called the Gantt charts. The Gantt charts comes with many project management software, including Microsoft project application. Uh, we also have the network diagrams, critical path analysis. Critical path analysis is very important, especially in the work breakdown structure because the critical path analysis is when we have tax one and tax two. In order to do tax two, tax one must be done first. So we have to make sure again, uh, we follow the exact sequence order of completing the task. And also that lead to critical change schedule at the time. Then most important also, of course, is the cost. So cost estimate and end value management. So here we can see we are dealing with the scope, the time, and the cost still. Those are the three elements of project management. And the tools we can use for the scope, as we said, the project charter, the scope statement, and also the work breakdown structure. Now the time, we have to have schedules. So we have nice tools like a Gantt chart, network diagrams. Those are the two major. Then critical path analysis, which can be part in the Gantt charts. And we have softwares that again can be used. So what are the super tools? Here we say the super tools are those tools that have the high use and also high potential for improving the project success such as a software for task scheduling. Uh, this would, example would be the Microsoft project uh, application. It consists of the Gantt chart, give us opportunity to be able to do the critical path analysis. We can also create a, a network diagram, everything. We also have the scope statement, requirement analysis, very especially in IT projects, when we always come up with requirement analysis. Here we can have both functional and non-functional requirements. We will discuss this in our future lectures when we cover requirement determinations. And also lessons learned reports. Also tools already extens extensively used that have been found to improve project importance, include the progress report, kickoff meetings, Gantt charts, and also change requests. Now a project success, yeah, we said there are several ways to define a project success. For example, I think the most important, if the project met those three main elements. So if a project met the scope, the time and the cost, then it's successful. Also, it may meet all these three elements, scope, time and cost, but customer is not happy. So the project also must satisfy the customer sponsor. And also the result of the project must meet its main objective, such as making or saving a certain amount of money or providing a good return on investment, or maybe improving 
customer relationship management or business operations, et cetera. Also the program and project portfolio management as we went through the definition, a program normally is a group of related projects that is managed in a coordinate way to obtain benefit and control, not available for managing them individually. So a program normally will consist of two or more projects being managed together. And we have what we call the program manager. So program manager will provide a leadership and the direction for the project managers. Let's say we have two projects. We may have two project managers for the two projects, but we may have only one program manager for both of them. So the program manager provide a leadership for the project managers. Example given here is common programs in the IT field include infrastructure, application development and user support. Now this will be an individual project, project for infrastructure, project for application development and thus user support. Uh, so we may have a pro, uh, project manager for each of these three areas, but we may have a program manager who is going to manage all the three project managers. So a project portfolio manage, uh, management, here we say, Organize group and manage projects and program as portfolio of investment. As an example, same as we have a portfolio of investment that contribute to, to the entire enterprise success. So portfolio managers help the organization make wise investment decisions by helping to select and also analyze projects from a strategic perspective. Now we have the project management compared to again, project portfolio management. You can see there's two types here, a project manager management, deal with the tactical goals, whereas a project portfolio management will be based on strategic goals. So example is, are we working on the right projects? or are we investing in the right areas? Do we have the right resources to be competitive? But with project management, we are going to ask a question like, are we carrying out a project well? Because this is based on tactics, tactical goal. And also are projects on time and on budget? Do project stakeholders know what they should be doing? So yeah. With the project managers, like we are managing the project tasks, the functions, process. Now, what's the best practice? Yeah, we say best practice as is an optimal way recognized by industry to achieve a stated goal or objective. So, example, Robert Botrick suggests that organizations need to follow basic principles of project management, including these two mentioned earlier in our course textbook. Make sure your projects are driven by your strategy. Now also be, be able to demonstrate how much project you undertake fits your business strategy and also screen out unwanted projects as soon as possible. Secondly, also engage your stakeholders Ignoring stakeholders often leads to, again, project failure. So be sure to engage your stakeholders at all stages of the project and also encourage teamwork and commitment at all times. And these are some of the suggest suggested skills for project managers. Uh, project manager need a different types of skills a lot. They should be comfortable with change understand the organization they work in and with, and also be able to lead teams to accomplish a project goals. So leadership, communication skills are very important. Now the role of a project manager as a job description may vary based on again, the type of project and the organization uh, uh, structure, but most include the responsibility like planning, scheduling, coordinating and working with people to achieve the project goals. 
And we should remember that again, 97% of successful projects were led by experienced project managers who can often help influence success factors. Also a project management body of knowledge, application area knowledge standards and regulation, and project environment knowledge, general management knowledge and skills and soft skills or human relations skills. These are all again skills for project managers. Also the 10 most important skills and competencies for project managers in, in a summary, people skills, leadership, listening, integrity, also ethical behavior, consistent, strong at building trust, verbal communication, strong at building teams, conflict resolution, conflict management, critical thinking, problem solving, understand, and also balances priorities. And also different skills needed in different situations. So for example, large projects, we may need a leadership, relevant prior experience. Uh, large or complex project experience is very important. Planning, people skills, verbal communication, team building. Now, high uncertainty projects, then this is where the risk management comes in. So risk management will be a very essential skill for high risk project, in this case, high uncertainty project. Expectation management, leadership, people skill, planning skills, et cetera. Again, most of all these tips uh, were referenced from Project Management Book of uh, Knowledge. So the importance of leadership skills, effective project managers provide leadership by example. So a leader always focuses on long-term goals and big picture objective Why inspiring people to reach those goals. A manager deals with day-to-day -day details of meeting specific goal, but a leader focus on long-term goal. So managers more or less a short-term goal, day-to-day -day details. And then we have what we call the project management software. There are so many of them. Most common one is the Microsoft uh, project software. So here we say there are hundreds of different products or software to assist in performing project management skills. But the main three categories, we have the low end tools, cost somewhere around less than $200 per person. We also have a mid range tools. These are all software applications. We also have a high end tools. Now to see uh, examples, we can go to the project management center website or top 10 reviews for links to many companies. So again, if you go online and you Google Project Management Center website or what are the top 10 best project management software applications, we may see some examples. So that will be the conclusion of this lecture. Again, most of the materials from these lectures came from Project Management Institute Organization Project Management uh, maturity model. So again, wish everybody the best. If you have any question again, then feel free to send an email. And as we said, again, most of all these materials come from the project management, professional exam study guide, textbook also. Thank you.